There are two kinds of people in the world. The first one, they wake up in the morning and they say, oh, I have to go to work, man. The second one, they wake up in the morning and they say, wow, I get to go to work. Now, what's the difference? They say the same thing, but they mean something totally different. The difference is simple, it's subtle, but it's deep. The difference is purpose. The first one, they live life on empty. Therefore, they go to work, they come back, they do meaningless things, and life kind of means nothing. The second one, they have found purpose. Therefore, they go to work, they come back, they do things that matter, and they live life on purpose. And that brings joy, fulfillment, happiness, everything we wish for in our lives. I've been helping people find purpose and live their life on purpose, finding fulfillment and joy for the last 10 years. It's the most rewarding thing that I've done with my life. And in this video, I wanna teach you everything that I've learned, and I'm gonna give you five practical steps that if you apply today, your life will change, things will be different, you'll find your purpose, and you will find joy, happiness, your life will be totally different. The New York Times, they ran a research in New York and they've asked a lot of people about their life purpose. And they have found out that 75% of people that they researched have no idea what they're doing on earth. That's it, literally. They wake up in the morning and they have no idea. That's seven out of 10, sometimes eight out of 10. In your circle, it's probably eight out of 10 people that have no idea why they do what they do. That is insane. That's gotta change because when you find your purpose, you will find joy, you'll find happiness, your life will be fulfilled. Everything is different. Everything feels different. And that's what I wanna talk to you about today. You know, in our world, a lot of people are dealing with mental health, depression, all of those things. And in most cases, you know, according to psychologists' research, in most cases, these people are not even sick. What they have is an empty life. And if they find purpose, they'll get rid of all of that. So I wanna give you these five practical steps and I'm gonna jump straight into it. The number one, you need to understand the seasons of life. Yeah, that's right, the seasons of life. Check this out, life is made of seasons and generally the seasons are like this, you know, you got before your 20s and after your 60s, all right? Before your 20s, you know nothing. That's just reality, I'm sorry if that's hurt. And after your 60s, you know something, but in between, Life is split into decades, whether you like it or not. Now, you might be faster, you might be slower, but life is split into decades. And understanding the seasons and the things that come with the seasons, it's extremely important to you. No one expects a 20 year old to know his purpose or her purpose, to be a millionaire. You could be the exception to the rule, that would be good. But no one expects that, you know? Seasons are made of different materials. There's different people in it, different circumstances. You know, no one expects someone at 20 to have five kids to look after. And we can expect a 20 year old to be super mature with their career, with their progress, with their finances. All of those things are important and you need to understand your seasons. It's the same thing when we see a 40 year old man playing video games all day long. That's not a man, that's a boy with a beard. He needs to grow up. At 40 years old, you should have a different expectation of life. That's the seasons, you have to understand the seasons of life and it comes with different people. You know, when you're 20, you're just coming out of university and you're starting a new job. Your friends are probably the people that work with you. You're single, you got time to go, you know, party at night and all of those things. But when you're 30, for example, it's very likely you, you might be getting married, maybe having a kid, then your friends change. And then now you're relating to people who have kids and they go to the same school. So your cycle of friends changes, your circle of friends changes. And then when you get your 40, it's a different deal. When you get your 60, it's a, a whole nother level, a whole nother deal. And then you're dealing with grandkids and maybe dealing with your parents who are getting old. All of those things need to take place, which takes me to the second practical step. You know, number one, understand the season. Number two, understand the tools and the outcomes of that season. That's extremely important. A long time ago, I watched a video with a guy by the name of John Acuff, and he was giving this TED talk, and I learned it from him, that in these decades, each one of them is designed to produce a certain kind of fruit. You know, when you're 20, for example, you're supposed to try out everything. That's your trial season. You got 10 years to try everything. You wanna start a business, you wanna start a career, you wanna start a different sport, you, you still have time to try. And out of those attempts, out of those trying attempts, you get the results, you get to analyze what happened, 
and then you get to figure it out what you're good at. By the time you reach your 30s, generally in that decade, on average, you're supposed to figure out two or three things that you are good at. Those are your talents. They were probably inside of you from the beginning. You just didn't know. Maybe you didn't ask the right question. Maybe you didn't ask the right people. Maybe you didn't research deep enough, but they were there. They are natural. It's in your DNA. And by the time you were 30, you're supposed to narrow down to two or three things that you're good at. I'll give you a personal example. I'm good at communicating. I'm good at playing basketball. I'm good at figuring out different things. That's about it. And if I am to choose, I'm 40 now, but if I were to choose when I was 30, I was pretty sure that basketball wasn't gonna take me anywhere. Although I was good at it, I wasn't tall enough, strong enough, athletic enough to make it to the NBA and to make it a pro career. Therefore, I should drop it. I was lucky enough, blessed enough to have mentors around me who showed me that. But by the time you're 30, you're supposed to narrow it down to two or three things that you're really good at. That's when you start narrowing your natural gift. That's when you start finding gold, digging deep for gold. That's when you're gonna come across this thing that I love called Ikigai, my main tool. I'm gonna talk about the Ikigai really soon, but that's the 30. By the time you move from 30 to 40, you're supposed to narrow down from three to one. That's when you become a specialist. So you go from 20, you know nothing. On 30, you're kind of a generalist. On 40, you become a specialist. Then you really hone that skill. In my case, like I said, communication. So I, I'm pretty comfortable communicating in front of the camera. I'm comfortable communicating on the stage. And honing that skill down has opened so many doors for me. And that's what I do. And out of that, out of becoming a specialist, other businesses, other deals, other networks, other friends have come and, and made this new circle. So now I help people find their purpose. I help people live their life on purpose. I help them be intentional with their lives through my communication, through my platform, through my courses, through my community. That's what I do. And, and I'm 40. So you become that specialist probably around that time. And the reason being is that from 20 to 40, you would have had enough time to narrow down your skills and then practice for about 10,000 hours. Malcolm Gladwell has this example that if you practice something for 10,000 hours, you kind of become a specialist, the guy in the industry. So today, I look around any social media or any channels or YouTube or anywhere available, and everyone talking about purpose of life, I can guarantee you, I got a whole lot more to talk about because I can go deep. That's me at 40. By the time you're 50, you're supposed to start reaping the rewards. And if you have reached your 50s and there is no rewards, it's a sign that something was done wrong in the past. Not to get desperate because now you have the wisdom, now you have all the attempts, now you have all the outcomes and you can figure things out pretty quickly and start again. It's not in vain that Ray Kroc, uh, Colonel Sanders, all of these guys started their empire when they were old because they had experience. And when you have experience and you can look back and test them, that's the best thing you can do. That's 50. And then when you're 60, you turn into a sage. And that's when you start teaching people. I'm sure there are people who are 40, 50, who can teach a lot of other guys. But the reality is you really know something once it's been tested through time. You know, it's family, kids, different circumstances, different jobs, different businesses. And if you can apply the same principle to two or three different circumstances, that's a proof that you were right. And if you can apply the same principle through different circumstances, that's a proof that that's not a principle, that's just a coincidence. There's a difference between a coincidence, good or bad, and a principle. A principle works in most situations. A coincidence is just a lucky shot. Step number one, understand the season. Step number two, understand the tools that come with it, the outcomes expected from it. At 20, you try everything. At 30, you find two or three things you're good at. At 40, you're supposed to be a specialist. At 50, you're supposed to reap the rewards. And at 60, you're supposed to multiply yourself. You're supposed to teach. Now, how do I do that, Pedro? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm about to show it to you. A lot of people think that you need all of these mystic things, these dreaming things to be able to figure out your calling in life, your purpose in life. You don't. You don't need to wait. You don't need to test a lot of things. You don't need to suffer. All you need is a good system, and I have the system. Let me remind you, I've got this amazing opportunity. If you go on my website, pedroonpurpose.live, I have two options for you, pretty simple. 
you can sign up for this course and on the course you will learn how to find your purpose. I think it's extremely important to find your purpose before you start the journey. But that's a finite task. You can do that. It's on, it's on my website, it's available and you can do that. Or you can embark on this journey to live on purpose. They say finding your purpose is easy. Well, I kind of agree. But living on purpose intentionally every day, that's what takes hard work. And we have a community of like-minded people who are doing that at this very moment. We are bouncing ideas off each other. There's consulting there, there's live calls with us. And you have the chance to bounce your ideas off as well and ask questions and answer questions. It's an amazing thing. That's what most people want. They want the tribe, they want the community. And I would love for you to be part of that. So you just jump on my website, pedroonpurpose.live, and you have the option. Now talking about the Ikigai, that's my favorite tool. Now there's so many tools you can use to find your purpose. Honestly, so many. Personality tests, aptitude tests, uh, I can talk about the Enneagram for hours. I can talk about Myers-Briggs and DISCs, and I, I can talk about how they interchange each other informations, and, and I can talk about how important it is for you to figure it out if you're a dominant person, if you're not a dominant person. I could do all that, but that's superfluous compared to the depth of finding your purpose and actually honing in there. The Ikigai is my favorite tool, and with anyone that I apply this to, all of them, no exception, no exception. All of them have their lives and their minds transformed. Their mindset's just a whole nother level. So let's go talk about the Ikigai. I'm gonna illustrate it for you. And this is pretty simple. If you go on my course in my community, obviously you're gonna have so much more. There's so much more to explore, but this is pretty simple. This is how we draw your Ikigai. What's the Ikigai? The Ikigai is a philosophy of life. It's a Japanese word that's actually made of two words, purpose of life. They researched these people in Okinawa in Japan a long time ago. It has become a Netflix series. And they have found out these people live long and happy. And the reason why it's because basically, number one reason, obviously they ate well, they had a good diet, they exercised, all of that is part of the philosophy of life of the Ikigai. But none of this happens, none of this is important if you don't find your purpose. And that's the point of this little exercise. This, this is worth millions of dollars. People pay me money to guide them through this. And I'm just giving this to you for free. So the Ikigai is a combination of four areas in your life, you know, four areas. So if you do a little quadrant, um, let's go like that. So what you're good at, uh, what pays well, what you love, and what the world needs. That's, just so you know, this is transcendence. Ooh, this is important. I, I transcendence, all right, let's go. Um, there is this psychologist from old called um, Maslow. And he, he, he became famous because of the pyramid of the needs, you know, the, the uh, physiological needs, the sociological needs, we're all uh, tribal animals, we wanna be together. But there, there, is, there is plenty of evidence that his work wasn't finished. And at the end of his life, there was this top of the pyramid that wasn't published. It wasn't publicized. And, and, and the idea is that when you reach the top, you know, fulfillment, self-fulfillment, there was something missing. That's why you have a lot of rich people, wealthy people who are still not happy with life. And the point there is transcendence. And trans, the, a, a good translation for the word transcendence is how do I put myself in the lives of other people? You know, there's a difference between inheritance and legacy. I want to leave an inheritance to my children, whether you like that idea or not. But that's material. That's something I leave to them or for them. But a legacy is something that I leave in them. That's the difference. And that's how I transcend. That's how I live forever. Because now my life is in their lives, all right? So that's what the world needs. That's the real secret for your purpose. A lot of people are gonna talk about all this. You know, you gotta find your gift. You gotta find what you're good at. You gotta find what pays well. It's the reason why a lot of people embark on a career journey. Oh, I'm gonna be a lawyer because it pays well. And then they get very frustrated after five years doing it because they find no pleasure in it. At the end of the day, the goal of life is to have more pleasure and less pain, right? So that's the idea. Like people will tell you, you know, find what you're good at, find what pays well, you know, find what you love doing, follow your passion. And there are some people out there saying that the, the, the advice of following your passion is a bad one. I, I disagree. I think you should follow your passion. What's the point of living life for 60, 70, 80, 90 years here on this planet and not enjoying what you're doing? 
So find your passion, follow your passion and, and make it do everything you can to do that. And I always say there's a difference between your job and your calling, your purpose. Your job is what you get paid for. Your calling or your purpose is what, if necessary, you would pay to do that. That's a different deal. But let's talk about this. This is how you identify your Ikigai. You, you got to make a list. And I'm not going to go into this with a lot of details. But just so you understand, in your house, make a list of maybe 10 items on each of these quadrants. Okay? 10 items. I, ju I just had here in our studio, um, one of the guys that works with me, part of our team, one of my partners. A while ago, he did this test. And he was telling me that he spent hours doing this. And he would never go back to it because it was so tiring. And obviously, it was good for him. But it was like... Too hard. So I, I want to give you the simple version that works. You can do this today. Make a list of 10 or however many. And then once you make that list, you know, write them down. And once you finish, here is what you want to do. You know, what am I good at? So I'm good at playing ball. I'm good at communicating. I'm good at music. I'm good at numbers. I'm good at uh, synthesizing things. You know, I can read a whole book and communicate it in five minutes. Uh, what pays well? So don't think about the categories that clash yet. So what pays well? Well, you know, being a doctor pays well. And, and then at the end of this list, you're going to look at it and, and then you're going to try to clash it. So what can I see in the list that fits all of them? And then when you do that, the Ikigai graph is going to become this. It's going to be, you, you've seen this before. Here, 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 and here. So your Ikigai, all of these areas, you know, what you love, what you're good at, uh, what pays well, and what the world needs. Okay, these areas combined, when you combine them, this is your Ikigai right here. So there's a bunch of things that you do right here. They're good, right here they're good, right here they're good, right? But what you want is this. This, my friend, is your Ikigai. The reason you wake up every morning. This is what you want. This is what is gonna bring fulfillment and joy in life. I love this, and this is how you should do it. This is, this is how you find your Ikigai. And I hope that helps. I'm going to move on to the fourth step. And again, if you want more, you go on my website. There are plenty of things that you can enjoy there, including my course and my community. But point number four, you have to understand how to compare now and then, present and future, short term and long term. A lot of us, before we're 40, we think short term. What can I get now? What can I get out of this? What job can I get that's going to pay well? How do I do this now? And in life, nothing worth doing is worth doing for a short period. Nah. Short-term things are not worth doing. You want to invest on the long term. As a matter of fact, you want to invest on something that's going to be bigger than you and it's going to live for longer than you. You want to invest on something that is eternal. Eternal value. That is legacy. So understanding the dynamics between now and then present and future. Don't worry about the past. Living in the past, here's a good advice for you. Living in the past, thinking about the things that you haven't done and you haven't accomplished, that's gonna bring a lot of frustration, maybe depression. And if you think about the future all the time, you, you, you're gonna be living on dreaming land. So you gotta find the balance, but understanding the implications of now and later. Here is a practical tip. You're about to go for a job interview. You're 28 years old. You're not married, but you, you and your fiance are planning on getting married. There's a lot of decisions in the line. What, buy, what house do I buy? Where do I live? Do I change countries? I've done all of it. I've lived in three countries. I've bought four properties. I have my own house. I have commercial properties. I have passive income. I've seen that side of the deal and, and I'm still doing this. So I don't do this for money. I do this for fulfillment because that's my calling. You understand the difference? It's a beautiful thing. So I have a little bit of authority to tell you how to do this, all right? Now and then. When you're about to make that decision, what job do I take? You got to weigh out the consequences of choosing that job now. If I choose that job now, what's the peak? What's the ceiling? Is my performance going to matter? Am I going to be treated as an employee for the rest of my life? Or do I have an opportunity to grow? Is career my main thing, actually? Or should I set up a business? I love the example of Simon Squibb. You know, Simon Squibb has founded this thing called Help Bank. He just goes around helping people find their, their purpose, basically, and start businesses. Because instead of becoming a, an airplane pilot, why not start a business where you own the flight company? 
you know, instead of being a chef working for someone, why not start your own restaurant? And look, I understand. Not everyone's going to be an entrepreneur. Not everyone's going to have their own business. But there is an opportunity there. And if you want to be free, that's the difference between being rich, wealthy, and free. If you want to be free, you need to determine the standards of the game. Right? There's a lot of people who are rich because they bought um, shares or they work for big companies. That's good. But are you free? I want to be free. I want to wake up in the morning and say, you know what? Today, this is what I want to do. I do this because I love doing this. That's the type of life I want to live. And that's the type of life I want to give you through these tools. So we've shared four tools so far. Understand your seasons. Understand the tools and outcomes of that season. Draw your ikigai and get to that conclusion. I can help you with it. Understand the tension between now and then, present and future. Outweighing the options is your best ruler, all right? You, you have to outweigh the options. If long-term decision gives you 20X, you want to go for long-term decision. But if long-term decision gives you 1.2X, you might want to take the risk because life is made of risks. And if you're not willing to take risks, you're not willing to be free. Freedom costs us a lot and you got to take risks. And the fifth practical tool, this is going to sound very repetitive, but personality tests. You have to figure out who you are. Check this out. If you don't know who you are, whatever you do is going to sound, or it's going to feel very boring. Okay. So personality test, I can give you um, the Enneagram. Have you heard of the Enneagram? Nine personality types. They just go like that in all of those circles. Anyway, that's the most ancient one. It's a beautiful thing because not only you understand who you are, but you understand how to deal and relate to other people. Another test is the DISC test. You know, if you're a dominant and, and all of that, uh, you can always do the Myers-Briggs, which is probably the most popular one. You can do that. There is another one from Patrick Lencioni. Patrick Lencioni, look that up. Uh, the six working genius types. Working genius types. That's a pretty good one too. I, I've done it recently. Pretty good. I love Patrick Lencioni. You got to figure that out. But the reason why I say you need this, it's because if you don't know who you are, you won't figure out what you do. It starts with who. You know, Simon Sinek became really famous for a TED talk that he gave saying, start with why. It became a book. I read the book. It's one of the reasons why I wrote my book, actually, The Iki Guide, Your First Step to a Life with No Regrets. In that book, in, in those TED, TED Talks, he talks about finding your why. That's great. But if you don't know who you are, there's no point. So we actually start with who. You find out who you are, and then you find out what you do. That's your ikigai. Based on your why. This is, the how comes later. You know, one of my favorite examples, the greatest leader of all times, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ told his disciples to do an amazing thing. It changed the world. It divided the times. We live, 20, this is 2024. And the only reason why we call 2024 is because 2,024 years ago, that man came to earth, died and resurrected. So whether you're religious or not, you have faith or not, that doesn't really matter. The fact is we have a calendar based on his birth and death. So that's, oh, that's insane. He's a great leader. Okay, The leadership traits that Jesus had, they're worth learning. Jesus never told his disciples how to do things. He just said, go and do it. Why? Number one, I know who you are. This is a, this is a biblical principle. And you would be wise if you take business principles out of the Bible. Okay. First of all, he knew who they were. A shepherd know his sheep by their name. So he was a shepherd. He knew his sheep. So it starts with who. He knew who they were. And then he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and make disciples. Why? You see, third thing. I want you to go and make disciples. Teach them everything that I taught you. Why? Because I have all the authority. All the authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, and now I'm passing it on to you. They figure out how. That's the idea of the seasons. That's why we go back to the seasons. 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. They had to try on their own. And some of them, <laughs> they actually lived for a long time just trying. So what I want to tell you today is this. You can find your purpose. You can figure this thing out. You don't have to suffer. There are tools that you can use. And I just gave you five 
practical steps for you to apply today. If you apply that today, figure out the season, figure out the tool of the season, draw your Ikigai, learn how to compare the tension between now and then, present and future, and finally, figure out who you are before you do anything, your life will be different, you will find fulfillment, you'll find joy. If you wanna find out more and you wanna explore this a little bit deeper, you go a little bit further and find a community of people who are like-minded, thinking the same thing, growing together, living life on purpose every day, trust me, those people are out there. Come and join me. PedroOnPurpose.live, it will be my pleasure to have you there. I'll see you on the other side. God bless.